All right, basement gourmet. We're gonna make some uh, beef stock today, brown stock. Uh, here's the ingredients. We have some uh, beef bones, about 10 pounds bones. We're doing a 20 quart stock pot, it's about 10 pounds. A uh, combination of uh, sections of the femur, cutting the rounds with the marrow. And we also got the knuckle uh, pieces cut into slabs. So you want a good variety. Uh, we got some tomato paste, uh, some whole peppercorns, bay leaves, uh, fresh thyme, a couple heads of garlic, and an onion, carrot, and celery. And we're going to start out, we're going to roast these bones in about a, about a 375, 400 degree oven. All right, now what I do with mine is I take the tomato paste, I like to take some of this paste and rub it all over the bones. You don't want to completely cover them because you want these bones to brown. And if they're completely covered with tomato paste, they're not going to brown. And I think brown on the uh, bones with some tomato paste uh, adds a little flavor with the uh, tomato uh, browning up with all the beef fat. I think it really, I think it adds a little to it. You don't have to do this. Some people don't do this. Some people do. I've always done it this way. As you can see, just kind of roughly smear a little on there. Flip them over. All right, so there you have it. We use one can of the paste and spread over the bones, and the other can we'll throw in the uh, stock. All right, let's get these in the oven. All right, so like I said, we'll let them go about 35 minutes, and we'll give them a turn. Maybe about 40 minutes, probably about 40 minutes, we'll say. And we'll give them a turn, let them go another 40 minutes. All right, so 40 minutes is up. So we're going to turn these bones over. Oh, look at that. Oh, it smells. Wonderful. See all that marrow starting to melt. Got to get all of them bad boys. Turn them all. Got another 40. As you can see, they're nice and browned. What we're going to do is we're going to throw all these bones in our big uh, stock pot here. Start loading them in. Look at that. Hmm? Pretty good. So we're gonna do all this stuff in here. We're gonna saute our veg in that, our uh, onion, carrot, and celery. So let's go and turn on these burners. I know this pan is really made for a stove top, but turn these burners down pretty low, and uh, we'll do the job. Just dump all our veg in there. All of them. One shot. All right, the beds have gone a few more minutes. Looking good here. What we're going to do, we want to get these in our big stock pot here. Put them out to the side. Start shoveling them in here. Yeah, we want to get everything in here. The stock's going to cook for at least a day, maybe a day and a half, two days. We'll see how it goes. But as we cook it, we're gonna skim the oil, the scum off the top. So we're gonna dump all this stuff in here, make sure we get all the flavor, goodness, in our stock. 
stock. Alright, we're going to top this dude off with the cold water. I'm take a couple containers here. Another important thing, you're making beef stock like this. You want to do a thick grade commercial aluminum stock pot. Use a thin wall stainless steel pot. You know, something like this. You know, thin stainless cook it for over a day. That metallic, uh, the metallic taste is going to come out of that pan into your stock of room. This is really important. You want to use aluminum, commercial grade, real thick stuff. It's three millimeter thick. Something like that. Make sure you get you a good commercial thick aluminum stock pot. Thin wall stainless, you might as well just throw the stock away. About right there. Alright, so we got that topped off with water. I'm going to go ahead and put in the other can of uh, tomato paste. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Been simmering. And as you can see, the pot of scum, about three fourths of a gallon there, of sludge that we've skimmed. As you can see, our stock is nice brown. Been one day. We're going to take a look at this, but we may need to go longer. We're going to take a look at these bones and uh, make that decision. Let's get all these bones out here. Still got 
some stuff hanging on there. So we got this bit of meat there. I want the bones to be clean. I said a day originally. Here's a marrow bone. Let's pick it up. You know, we still we can't quite see through it. See how we still have the stuff in there? You want to be able to pick them bones out and be able to see clean through that dude. That marrow is still hanging in there, so that tells me we got some more time to go. So we're gonna let her go. As long as it takes, it could be two days. As a matter of fact, it probably will be two days. It'll probably be tomorrow, about 24 hours from now. And we'll continue to skim, top off with water. As you can see, we're keeping our level about, I like to go about an inch and a half from the top. Just ever so slowly boiling. It's been 48 hours, two days. As you can see, our sludge tank almost made it to the forecourt. One gallon of sludge. We're going to pull these bones out and uh, take a look and show you what it should look like. Really rich. Look at that red dark color and this stuff is going to be intense. Oh! Let's get one of these bones out here. Right on here and you can see there's nothing. Nothing left. Pretty much all that collagen and gristle stuff is just melted down. It's like butter. See, see if we can get close up on this bone here. See how it looks real porous. See all the holes like in it. That is the sign that the bones have given their all. You start to see all them pores open up. Let's see if we can fish a marrow bone out of here. Marrow bone, we can take it, and as you can see, you can see straight through that dude. Nothing left. Maybe a little bit there on the side, but it's just falling apart like we're done. Two days of cooking, the bones have given their all. Alright, so we're just gonna go ahead and kill the heat on that dude and let it just stand for about an hour before we even uh, start straining. It's pretty hot, so we're just gonna let it sit there for an hour, let it cool down a little bit. All right, so we're gonna start straining this stock here. Let's take a pan, dip it in there. Start running it through the strainer. See what it looks like after the strainer. Well, we may run it through a cheesecloth. If it looks good, we'll leave it at this. Going through the screen. About a, about a gallon and a half in this one and a gallon, about two and a half gallons stock. I strained it through a double double screen, which is a little finer than normal one. So I don't even I don't think I want to strain it through cheesecloth. I think I might just leave it as is. It looks pretty clear. I think we're gonna leave it. Alright, you want to get this stock cool quick. Or you're uh, risking a chance of uh, bacteria. Maybe growing in it. So a good way to do that is uh, put them in a big sink, a bunch of ice, cold water. Try to put a little more water in there. Let them chill out there for about 45 minutes, hour. And they should be nice and cool. I'm gonna put them in containers and freeze it. So there you have it. Brown stock from the basement gourmet.